Hello, welcome to video two, Fishing, Foraging and Outdoor Adventure. Today we're back in the woods um, and we're going to be doing a little bit of wood carving. A uh, really simple one again. Um, so what we're doing today is we're going to make some Harry Potter style magic wands. Okay, so uh, Lewis, why don't you show the camera yours? So that's one, uh, this is uh, a shop bought one, uh, one that we're going to try and copy, uh, but with proper wood. And Lolly, you go and show the camera yours? Yeah? So they were, they were about 35 or 40 dollars each when we went to america last year so uh, what we're going to try and do is make a few of our own uh, and try and see what they look like uh, but um hand carved ones uh, in the woods um i'm sure we'll have lots more fun than just buying one off the shelf So you'll see these two kids uh, and this dog in a lot of my videos because nearly everything, uh, all our little adventures are as a family. The only ones that they won't be in are the ones where they're too dangerous uh, to do. Th things like where you're wading through water or you're climbing up uh, steep rock faces or something like that. Um, so what we're going to do today is uh, when we're making these wands, we, first thing we've got to do is we've got to get some wood. So uh, easier said than done because it, you think... Uh, find some wood in the woods uh, is easy but want something that's good for carving so um, carving wood you don't want something that's old you don't want something that's got um, cracks in it you don't want something that's uh, been lying on the floor uh, with, with rot in it for months on end so what uh, we're only taking small amounts today but we're going to find some nice green wood uh, green meaning it's still got moisture left in it and it's still um, still going to be uh, really pliable and e easy to work with in your hands. Uh, so, so Lewis and Ola are going to go and pick their own pieces of wood uh, and they, they're going to start carving. They need to be um, about um, half an inch thick and then um, 10 or 12 um, inches long. So yeah, move. Um, um, which one are you going to make Lola? Um, I am, um, I'm going to make a Hermione's one but... Um, Who's? Um, um, a Mayonnaise one, sir. A Mayonnaise one, yeah. And, um, like, it doesn't really have to be, like, um, with leaves around it. doesn't it. have to have leaves on, does it, now? No. We'll make it however but, you like, want it. We do want it, like, really green, like, like it's tight. Tia. Ow. Come here. Yeah, okay, so let's go and find some wood and let's get carving. Yeah. Right, when we're picking our wood, I want to try and be as considerate as I can about the... Uh, the woods that we're in so i'm not going to go cutting away a big uh live healthy trees um in a way that's, that's going to kill them or uh in any way leave this woods in any less uh worse condition than when i than when i arrived so uh, i've got some trees that are plentiful uh, some trees that are really good to use uh, and um be able to take out a branch off rather than uh you know one of the main trunks obviously because you only need something small so something like uh, the, the silver birch trees, uh, there's uh, thousands of silver birch in, in these woods and uh, they've got really long straight um, trunks, they've got really long straight branches and that's something that's going to be uh, really good uh, as a choice of wood uh, to make our ones from. Mine, yeah, no. um, it's hopefully going to be um, a straight handle no. and I've got some zigzags. I'm trying to pick a piece that isn't going to kill the tree. So you can see this tree here, uh, it, it's a well established tree, nice tall, loads of branches off it. Uh, right down the bottom there's a bit of uh, a shoot off. Uh, you know, so we're going to cut off this one here, it, it comes up along here uh, on this piece. It's quite a, uh, a quite a few features on, on the piece of wood, make it look nice and rustic as a uh, uh, as a wand, so uh, Lewis is going to uh, cut that little piece down now for my help, obviously. That's it. Let the saw do all the work, yeah? Keep going, that's it, right. And then to the other part there, so the other side of this. So this part's going to be the handle, that part's going to be the tip. I'm going to cut from there, yeah? So you get right underneath it, so as you saw in, uh, straight above your shoulder, yeah? Nope, oh, watch out, mate.
same branch here so as we're not uh, killing more of the tree uh, I want this bend here so I want that, that fatter part there as a handle and I'm going to uh, uh, sand all this part down to get all this nice and thin so it's going to be like a, the crooked handle that I said I wanted and we then got all of our wooden um, to for our magic wands it's all in the bag let's get back to the log cabin and start carving go So welcome to our log cabin. This is um, what we've built over the last couple of months. This is where we're going to do loads of our fun kind of uh, creative um, bits of carving and making things out of wood. So uh, these sort of things are the things that we've carved over the last uh, few months. So uh, quite nice detailed little spoons. Uh, um, got a few of them, all different types of woods, different uh, treatments we put on them. And uh, there's a little owl. <laughs> We'll uh, do some videos on how to carve these. Sweet, so uh, we'll do some videos on how to carve these. Lovely little pollock up there. That was uh, actually an eighteen and a half pound pollock there. So we, uh, I ate the the fish itself. So it's not like I killed it just for its head. But um, once you've done it, I've um, preserved it uh, in technical alcohol, and then once it's dried out, uh, preserved, then we varnished it. Uh, um, I made this little feature on the wolf uh, out of it. Pretty, I think it's pretty cool. A lot of people are freaked out by it. Right, so the first thing we've done is I put a protector down on this workbench because I spent a lot of money getting really good wood to make this workbench. And I don't want uh, all the knife uh, marks or axe marks or anything uh, in this workshop. So just a cheap bit of MDF uh, just to protect the work surface. Right, here's our selection of woods. So we picked uh, a few uh, while we are in the woods. And uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got nine pieces there. Uh, all would make um, a reasonable one. So, uh, kids, we'll both pick one, yeah? And then we'll start carving, yeah? Mm, this one, I think. Which one's that one? Which one do you want, Lola? Used for most of uh, my carving. So, uh, I've got an inexpensive um, hatchet axe. I've got uh, a small carving knife, uh, the blade really needs to clean it up, so I'm going to show you that. I've got a little crook knife, uh, good for carving out um, things inside the bowls, uh, bowls or spoons, it's for do, uh, doing that, that type of, uh, of cut. And I've also got uh, a lower angle one as well, so if you want to do something less shallow, uh, maybe take a bit more material off, uh, I've got this knife as well. Not going to need these today though, because uh, basically all we're going to need is the axe to take the bulk of my cereal off, and then uh, and then this this knife to um, uh, to do the detail carving. Oh, and obviously most important of all is these uh, anti-cut gloves as well. So where uh, you can get Kevlar ones, you can get uh, all sorts of different uh, you know new materials. Uh, but uh, but these are brilliant. You know you. I wouldn't say it's impossible to cut yourself with these, but but it's uh, the good anti-cut gloves. Uh, always wear them uh, on the opposite hand to what you cut with. So if you're right-handed, you uh, use it in your left hand. Use a glove on your left hand. Anytime you're cutting, you're always going to have your knife in your right hand. So um, you're never going to be able to cut your right hand. So uh, left hand, uh, it's got this rubber grip on. It's got the the anti-cut material on. Knife in your right hand. Uh, as long as you keep the blade away from your body, you're not really going to hurt yourself. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is take the bark off from here down. Right, the next one I'm going to do the same again. sharpen this blade like I said it's um, it's not in the best condition it's a good knife it's just uh, it's a Mora carving knife uh, Swedish blades really good all three of these knives are but I just need to uh, just sharpen it back up so the first thing you do if it's really out of shape you use uh, quite a, a hard file just to take uh, the edge off then you use uh, a bit of sandpaper 
just to uh, take it down at a grade because obviously that's really coarse. That's kind of an intermediate wet and dry sandpaper. And then I use a sharpening seal at the end just to uh, really finish it off. Right, now we took the bark off, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'm gonna use this because Lewis wants zigzags in his uh, wand. So to get the angles right, uh, and so as I don't take too much material off with the axe or, or make it so it starts to splinter I'm just going to use this to take off uh, the, the initial bit of, um, of material Right, so Lewis got his glove on now got the blade and the blade's pointing away Yeah. so what we can do now is we're going to trim all these edges up now This is my finished wand. My my dad's um needing up the edges and put um um carved in um, a little hoop um, by there. I really like the wavy wood on the wand and the nice detail on the handle. This is the second one that I've done now, so I've jumped quite far ahead. Um, I got a little bit carried away with myself, but this is the uh, second one. Pretty cool, I think. I've um, carved uh, what's called like a, a wood spirit into the handle. It's a bit like a wizard. I think it looks pretty cool. As you see on the top, he's got a hat. It kind of like ruffles over at the top. And he's got a face with a big moustache on. I've carved in all the detail for his, his beard into it. All across the back of his head, he's just got, you know, to see his hair. And then uh, coming down uh, the rest of it, I've just carved in these spirals. Uh, I'm probably going to carve these a little bit deeper. Um, and at the end, uh, the, the wood's got this kind of uh, natural defect in it, which looks pretty cool, actually. Um, you know, all wood's different. It's all all unique, but uh, but this piece I think it works quite well. That right at the end, it's got this uh, little bit of a different colour on it, uh, and like a a brown core running through the middle of it. So uh, all together, I'm really pleased with uh, the second wand. Uh, this quick rub down well dry off now taking the uh, a lot of the the dye off off the surface of it but leaving it nice and deeply ingrained into the into the all the crevices where I've, I've done all the the carving from so if you can see on there now nice nice lot of detail and that really emphasizes all the the carving on it see all the hair in the back of its head um, it's, it's eyes, nose, all the moustache, the features really come to life now. And I think that, that really finishes it off. I think that looks, I'm really impressed with that actually, I think it's pretty cool.
So the die always sinks really deep into the ends of grain. So you can see here where I cut through, the grain runs this way and I've chopped in that way and that way. So it soaks in, much like the pack of a pack of straws all together. It won't soak through the sides of it, but it'll soak through the ends of it. And it's the same with the grain of wood. As soon as um, as I put dye on, on those sections there, they go really dark really quick. Whereas the outside edges here, which are um, where the grain's running, um, all the fibres are end, um, side on, it's really hard to get the, uh, the dye to penetrate them. Two finished ones, you can see Lewis is here. It's the one where we had um, the, the natural uh, where a branch is ripped off or something and the tree's repaired itself. I thought that would make a pretty cool handle uh, with a couple of little um, smaller branches sticking out. We've, we've cut it in like a zigzag shape, sanded it down. Uh, I think that's made a pretty cool wand. And, uh, and this one's just took uh, quite a bit more work. Um, yeah, this is Lola's, but as you can guess, she's probably not, not done an awful lot of this one. Um, but you see, it's, it's got the wizard's face on, she's got the hat, uh, all the, the, the nice features on the face, the beard, uh, the hair at the back of the head. And then uh, I've, I've carved in this uh, spiral line. So what I did with that is I got a piece of string, tied it up here. I tied the piece of string going round in like a spiral, tied it off at the bottom. Uh, just so as I could evenly space the um, the spirals, got a pencil, marked it along all the way around. And once I've marked it, took the string off, and then I, I've gone away and, and etched uh, those those lines into it. You see, I'm, I'm quite happy with that one. Those are the two ones. The kids can go and have, uh, play with. This is a my wand. Um, it's called Lazarus with it. This is my wand. Um, it's all wavy by there, and it's got nice detail here. I had more for making it than buying it from the shop. Um, so um, um, that's fortune. See on the next video. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>